What's up, everyone? Welcome to this name, Philly Sports History, for October 22nd, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of the podcast. It is Tuesday, so it's time for a little motivation slash positivity. And for this quote today, I don't have a ton of talk up after. It's just one of those quotes that just really makes you think and, and wonder. And I've talked before about Mark Manson. He's the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And great book. I follow him on Twitter. I subscribe to his newsletter. So this came up in his newsletter this week. And the quote is, choosing what, it's part of a larger quote, but choosing what to pursue is more important than choosing how to pursue it. Make sure you're facing the right direction before you start running. And I I just feel like in life, So many times we get caught up and we just go full steam ahead and sometimes it's just automatic. We don't think about what we're doing and next thing you know, we're how many ever weeks or days or whatever into something and you realize you got to stop, reset, start all over. So I think it's important to have a clear vision of what you want and if it's making sense for you or making you happy, uh, then then. Pursue it full steam ahead. Make sure you're facing the right direction when you run. And if it's not, I think you need to stop, reevaluate, and then get yourself facing the right direction and then go from there. Uh, I've done this so many times in my life where I jump into a project or or jump into something without fully thinking it through. And you realize, ah, this wasn't what I expected or what I thought. And you have to stop. So, uh, and that's fine. You reevaluate and then you move on. But I I think a lot of time is wasted in trying to pursue things that either don't make sense or don't make you happy or just are not the right thing. And I think it's important sometimes to maybe take a moment and stop and think about things. And it's something I really try to do, look at all angles of things. And really, sometimes I do it to the the detriment of what I'm trying to do. Uh, I've gone probably to the opposite end of the spectrum where... Like I need all the information before I can really decide. Sometimes you need to make the decision a little faster. Uh, But you just got to make sure you're not working toward the wrong things. Know what you want and then go out there and get it. I see it all the time in my job in education, both at my school level. Uh, Hopefully nobody from school is listening to this as I'm going to make my next point. Uh, But a state level, national level with education, I think so many times we're just like, oh, we see the bright, shiny thing and run toward it without really thinking of the implications. And truthfully, I I live it every day. Uh, There's a lot of initiatives that I I think, okay, the, the, the thought process is correct, but we're running this way and where we want to go is this way. And not being able to make those decisions. Some of those come top down from the state. Some of them come from the national government. So I think it's just important sometimes to to know, understand what your goal is. Make sure you're facing the right direction before you start running. Um, so I, I really like that quote. It really hit hard and hit home for me with just what's going on uh, in my day job. As you guys know, I'm in education. So Uh, Again, that's school, state, national level. I I just think a lot of things that are coming out are uh, rash decisions almost like, oh, look, the shiny new object and not really fully thinking things through. Uh, That is probably the closest you'll ever get me to going political on something like this, because that's not even a political thing, because I think both sides completely are screwing up the education system and that is my TED talk for today but I really did like that quote choosing what to pursue is more important than choosing how to pursue it make sure you're facing the right direction before you start running and I think in life any aspect of life sometimes we just start running and realize halfway through we're running the wrong direction and that's not good so I think sometimes it's important to just stop Collect the information you need and make a more informed decision so you're not running in the wrong direction. And that has been our Tuesday positivity for this week. Hopefully, as you go through your week, it's something for you to think about. But like I said, I think that was just a very eye-opening thing because in, in many aspects of my life, I felt or I feel that I've run the wrong direction before I realized that's not the, really what I'm trying to pursue. So hopefully, you can take something from that. Uh, for your Tuesday motivation. 
Some quick housekeeping notes. First, if you're hearing a loud noise in the background, I'm not sure, I think my laptop is about to die. So I might be in the market for a new laptop, but I'm gonna start researching and doing everything I need so I don't make a purchase, purchase and then find out it's the wrong purchase. Uh, also, if you are listening on Google Podcasts, uh, or usually listen on Google Podcasts. For some reason, there's been issues with the podcast and syncing with YouTube. Uh, three or four days recently, it, it hasn't posted. There's some days where, despite the fact I have the settings set to public, it's posting as private. Uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, I have a, a ticket into YouTube or Google, I should say, to try to fix that. So I apologize for any confusion. And I always like and I always say I, I try to give you factual, true information to the best of my ability. Sometimes I mess up. Yesterday, I said the score of that game five of the 2009 NLCS was 10 to two when it, it was, in fact, 10 to four. Either way, Phillies won their second straight. But I always want to make sure the numbers, the stats and the facts are correct. So it was 10 to four. The Phillies beat the Dodgers, not 10 to two. Be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont at Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's the best way because I know that's my main, between that and posting on Spotify, those are the two things I always post on and then Spotify sends it out to wherever you get your podcast, but the YouTube video will always be there and that is Jimbo underscore Mont. And then spread the word. I've been saying it, but the... the a lot of the listeners here has been word of mouth, and I truly, truly appreciate it. So just spread the word. If you're enjoying it, likely someone else is as well. And then the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony is fast approaching November 7th. All the information you need is in the description as far as inductee bios, ticket information, if you want to be a sponsor. All of that is in there. Um, I know a few of you have reached out uh, to to donate and, and be a sponsor. So we truly, truly appreciate that. But all of that is in the description. And we will be starting the 2024 induction class to the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame spotlight tomorrow. We'll just go through an alphabetical list, uh, but it's a great, great class this year. All right, let's start with a recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, who was the GOAT of the game? No surprises at all. 85% of you, we broke a record yesterday, by the way, for the amount of people that voted. 85% of you agreed that it was Saquon Barkley. No argument for me there. That was the Saquon Barkley game. Uh, so hopefully they're able to kind of keep that running. No pun intended there. Uh, but thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. There will be another one here later in the show. The number for the Back to the Future voice and text line, 267-495-8531. Get anything Philly sports related off of your chest, including the question of the day. All right, so let's start with kind of wrapping up uh, this game against the Giants uh, before we get into some of the news. And I, a couple stats I saw. The first, uh, I'll give credit to Elliot Shores Park for this. Uh, and he posted this on his Twitter, but the Eagles are 19 and five when Jalen doesn't turn the ball over. Uh, I believe that's since 2021, since he became the starter. And I, I really feel like that's one of those duh moments. But it, it's really key to know that 19 and five when he doesn't turn the ball over. We've seen it the past two weeks. They haven't necessarily been the prettiest games, but he's been clean with it. Hasn't turned it over, and they've won both games. So it really, I, I firmly believe that the, a run is coming here. And I said they were teetering between going on a losing streak or a winning streak. And, and I could totally see them running off a couple more games here in a row. Um, and I know a lot of folks yesterday were like, yeah, they won two games. But it was against the Giants who were terrible and the Browns who were terrible. And while that is true, you got to look at the execution specifically on defense. And yes, those offenses are not good offenses. Uh, we, and we saw that really last week. Daniel Jones is just terrible. And I will take any chance I can to say he's just not a good quarterback. He's absolutely terrible. But 
I think the what's important is the fact that they're executing the way they should. And I think it's building confidence. They, they're, they're very young and they're, they're starting to get a little bit of a swag going about them. And I think, are they going to shut out uh, the Bengals and other good teams? No. However, doing things the right way and, and kind of working through what – their issues were before the buy, I think is important because going back to the preseason prediction I had, I said they were going to struggle on defense in those first four games. Now they played well against the saints. They didn't play that bad minus that last drive against the Falcons. And honestly, I feel as though if Saquon catches that pass on fourth down, the Eagles are five and one, and we're having a whole different conversation about this team right now. So I think there are a lot of good things in place Yes, they were against bad teams, but I think that is the confidence builder, the confidence boost. And now this is going to be a big test this week against the Bengals, especially in Cincinnati. But I, I'm feeling good about what I'm seeing from this defense because they, they have the talent. It's just a matter of getting adjusted to Vic Fangio's system. And I think they, they really found their where they need to be. Obviously a big test, but I think that building confidence against those teams. I mean, it's no different than in college football when teams schedule cupcakes to kind of have a get right game. I think coming out of the bye, having the Browns and the Giants to what you, I mean, let's face it, two cupcakes get right game for the Eagles going into this next stretch against somewhat tougher opponents. I mean, the Bengals are not uh, world beaters right now, but the preseason they were a playoff pick uh, to make the playoffs in the AFC. So it's a good test, but I think where they're at, I think it's a good stepping stone and building block. And I feel as though a run is coming. I've, I've seen it so many times with this team going back to the Andy Reid Donovan days. So I, I just have a feeling that the, the confidence is starting to get there, especially coming off where they were last year. They've won two in a row now. They've actually beat a team by more than 10 points, kind of getting that little bit of that swag back. So I like it. Um, and I just want to mention again that whole Saquon uh, not wanting to break his career high. I actually saw the video of it, and if you haven't seen it, where Nick Sirianni goes over and basically says, I really want you to get this. Uh, I'm getting ready to take the starters out if they, if they don't score here. What do you think? And he's like, nah, let the young dogs eat. Uh, and you got to like that out of him. And and Saquon, despite being a Penn State guy, despite playing for the Giants, kind of always sort of liked him. Um, I know I'm, I'm not big on Penn State guys, but uh, I'll, I'll give him credit for that. All right, that does lead us into today's question. Oh, quick notes. I forgot the Jaguars game has been uh, moved, flexed out of Sunday night football to 4 o'clock. That is a Kelly Green game. The little Sean McCoy getting inducted into the Eagles Hall of Fame game. I don't know. I, I mean, I think that's more on Jacksonville than it is the Eagles, but it's kind of one of those things. I think they put the Colts, Vikings, and I mean, to be honest, I'd rather watch the Colts, Vikings, than Eagles, Jaguars myself. Uh, and then for next week, the Eagles did open as three point underdogs for now. Uh, I do expect that line to come down, but. That pretty much means it's a pick em game. They're giving the Bengals three points for being at home. So certainly a winnable game, but we'll have more on that as the week goes. Now to the question of the day. Everybody's been talking about it. I feel it's coming. Have the Eagles turned this season around? 267-495-8531. That's a Back to the Future voice and text line that'll get you in. I think they have. But what do you think? Have the Eagles turned this season around? Um, I know everybody's talking, oh, they played Last place teams, but I have a feeling, like I said, it's turned around. But what do you think? 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. All right, Flyers back in action tonight at 6 against the Capitals down at the Wells Fargo Center. I think they need to bounce back. I think they will be um, uh, more rested. They've slept in their beds, things like that. I expect more high energy out of the Flyers tonight. Sixers open the season tomorrow against our old pal Doc. And it's time for our final Sixers preview segment. The prediction for the season. And 
I, I've seen these numbers as low as 49 and a half, as high as 52 and a half. Uh, their win totals for the season. DraftKings has it as 52 and a half. I think that's a high total. However, if they stay healthy, I, th- I think they can g- win 52, 53, 54, 55 games. I've seen some pr- uh, projections to having them as much as 60. I think that that's a stretch. Um, but it's hard to pick what this team is going to do this year because of the unknown of how the back-to-backs are going to play, how healthy they're going to be. All of that. And I do feel if everyone stays healthy, that number goes over. And that includes playing the back-to-backs and things like that. Realistically, I I don't know. And it's going to be sort of a cop-out answer here. But I think they win anywhere between 46 and 54 games. I mean, I know that's a big spread. But a lot is going to come down to the health. I can see them finishing anywhere from 7th to two or three in the East, depending on how things break. So it's one of those things. I I just don't know where to go with this team. I think realistically, probably like a 48, 49 win season is feasible. I've talked about, I think Tyrese is going to step up. I think because of the way they're going to manage things, I think they'll stay relatively healthy. I think you're going to see a different Joel Embiid than what we've seen. I think he's going to be focused on really trying to stay healthy. I know once he gets into the heat of battle, he's probably just going to go out and and be Joe. But that's where Nick Nurse and Daryl Morey need to come in with the load management. I am going to go on record, though, and say they finally break out of the second round this year. I think they're going to be focused. I think their sights uh, are set on April and the playoffs starting. I I do think they're going to get a top three to top three or four seed, but I I think they're legitimately probably the second best team in the East behind Boston if everyone is healthy. And I think it might be a stretch to think everybody's going to be healthy all year and they'll get the two seed, but I'm going on record. Three seed, they get out of the second round and make it to the conference finals. I don't know what is going to happen with that. Once they get that monkey off their back, though, who knows? Uh, and then once you get to the conference finals, it's it, it really is. I think the Celtics should be there. They're the better team. But, I mean, it's a rivalry, so you never know. But if they're healthy, why not? I mean, I think they have a two-year window, realistically, I think, to get to the championship. It's going to be... I think touch and go a little bit in the beginning as they kind of figure out rotations, as they figure out how they're going to all play with each other. But like I said, three seed, and they finally make it to the conference finals this year. Mark it down. Uh, But I know I'm totally setting myself up. It's the, the ultimate Lucy with the football moment. I know as I'm speaking this, as I was writing down notes, as I'm saying this, I'm setting myself up, but listen, as my uncle said, all you can do is root for them and hope for the best. So we are going to root for the Sixers this year and hope for the best. Um, But but that is my official prediction, third seed in the East, and they make it to the conference finals this year. I'm sure everyone will be replaying that when it does not happen, but I'm going on record to say three seed conference finals. All right, today we're going to go back to 2006. And on this day in 2006, the Eagles lost to Tampa Bay in a wild game down in Tampa Bay. It was hot. Donovan McNabb was puking in the huddle. Uh, I saw an interview about this game with Rondé Barber. He said it's the hottest game he ever played in. The Eagles, for the most part, dominated this game, though. But it was Matt Bryant hitting a 62-yard field goal as time expired to beat the Eagles. At the time, it was the second longest field goal in NFL history, a tie with a few other guys. And that field goal, if you remember this game, this is why we're talking about it, it came just seconds after Brian Westbrook went 52 yards on a screen pass from McNabb to give the Eagles a 21-20 lead. Um... McNabb just was not good in that game, I guess, depending on how you look at it. He did throw for 300 yards. He threw for five touchdown passes, uh, one to Thomas Tope, one to Reggie Brown, the one to Brian Westbrook, 
unfortunately, he threw two touchdown passes to Rondé Barber, the Eagles killer. Yeah, Donovan threw two pick sixes, one of his three interceptions in that game. Rondé Barber, man, I can still uh, – I wasn't able to confirm this, but I know of at least three pick sixes he had against the Eagles, the other one coming in the NFC Championship game. But as I said, the Eagles dominated this game, 500 yards of total offense, turned the ball over four times. Of course, the two pick sixes by Rondé Barber. The defense was outstanding. They held the Buccaneers to 196 total yards, and you really can't fault them on that last drive. There was like 33 seconds in the game, and at the time, in today's NFL, 62-yarder is like a 45-yarder back in the day, but what was that? almost 18 years ago a 62 yarder that is a big deal so you can't fault the the defense for allowing the the buccaneers to get a 62 yarder especially when they gave up only 196 yards this one was on McNabb though three interceptions two pick sixes uh and the eagles lose to the buccaneers 23 21 as matt bryant hit a 62 yarder as time expired down in tampa I vividly remember watching this game thinking when Westbrook scored that game because it it was the Eagles dominated, but because of those two pick sixes, it was just one of those games where like, man, and it's like, all right, we're going to steal one here. And then it's watching where I'm like, there's no way it's going to fall short. He's not hitting a 62 yarder. Sure enough, right through the uprights, Eagles lose in Tampa 23, 21 and Rondé Barber can't stand you can't stand him uh he's as he quoted his favorite memory uh of being in the nfl was being a pain in the eagles ass and yes on this day in 2006 ronde barber was a pain in the eagles ass all right let me know your thoughts on the sixers season what are your predictions two six seven four nine five eight five three one am i crazy probably but just go ahead, rip me on the Back to the Future voice and text line. And then when it does happen, I can give you the Nelson laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, or when ultimately Lucy pulls the football, you can give me the Nelson laugh. But let me know, what are the Sixers, what's the outlook for the Sixers season? 267-495-8531. Let me know your thoughts too. Are the Eagles going on a run? I'm saying they are. I think we're going to see an uh Another win or two here before they finally lose. Uh, Maybe even three because I think Dallas is one of the next three games as well. I'm feeling good about this team. I like what I'm seeing. And yes, I know it was the Browns. Yes, I know it was the Giants. But I think I I saw some good things schematically that I think will translate to the better teams. But let me know what your thinking is there. We'll have more on the Flyers. Sixers open up tomorrow against our old pal Doc. Uh, Paul George gets evaluated today, so we'll know if he's going to play. Not sure about Joe yet. I would imagine he's going to play. I mean, he did play in the Olympics. I know Nick Nurse was a little coy about whether or not he was going to play. But hopefully we have some answers tomorrow for the show. Remember, choosing what to pursue is more important than choosing how to pursue it. Pursue it. Make sure you're running in the or you're heading it, facing the right direction before you start running. I see it too often. I do it myself. Make sure you're going the right way. Don't go full speed ahead in the wrong direction and set yourself behind. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for October 22nd, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Tuesday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.